square beckons. Hipwell going back with it. Gathers cleanly. Snaps and kicks the goal. Hawthorne get their second and the fast start the second half. Big one-on-one here. Ballard able to fist it away, but Bonner is there. Gathered it cleanly and has an open goal square to work with. On the left, McDonough gets another. And the Hawks now have a game high lead. Bellows was she taken high. Levicki did well, not to give away a free kick. Levicki drags it in. Lucas Rod on top of it. Holding the ball. The captain in a milestone match seals it for the Hawks. And as the siren sounds, Hawthorne have won three on the trot. Yes, indeed. The Hawks went back to back to back, pinching the four points from a plucky Port Adelaide side. And we're back to recap that fantastic performance. But first up, we're talking arrivals and departures as we take a look at the 2022 trade period. Welcome to another edition of the Hawk Talk podcast. My name is Nick Mason and tis, we're about 24 hours removed from all the wheeling and dealing. What are your thoughts on what ended up being a fairly busy trade period for the Hawks? We left Everything to the last moment. Yeah, were you counting down? Were you watching the coverage? I was, yeah. It was quite an anxiety-inducing experience. (laughs) I don't recommend it. No, I didn't feel that at all. I just got jack of them talking about how good Melbourne would be now. Well, that sounds like you. That's on brand. Yeah. You don't want to... Nothing about Hawthorne and, and there was gross reporting or, you know, ridiculous amount of reporting on Liam Pickering's smile. And whether it was happening or whether that was a smirk or, you know... It was... Okay, generally a smirk. Yeah. Let's play the odds. We'll, we'll go with smirk. Big statement from the Hawthorne Footy Club. How are you feeling about it? Well, last year we tried to offload the talent that left this year. Mm-hmm. Apart from Chad, who is like the last man standing, really. He must be feeling like the last duck at the sideshow. Well, Sam Mitchell's taken a can of kerosene to Clark Rose Framework. He's burning the place down and he's remaking it. <laughs> You're going to go with scorched earth, are you? Well, I mean, that's how it appears. Like you said, he, he's been looking to do this for at least 365 days. Yes, but I was going to make the point that I don't think he wanted to move off O'Meara and Mitchell in the same period. I think he wanted yeah. to move one last year yes, and one again yeah. this year, but we're still hitting the same mark yeah. that we would have been at. I'm going to suggest that you're right, because if I could take the deconstruction metaphor just a little bit further, you probably want to take it apart brick by brick. You don't want to do the wrecking ball. You don't want it all in one go. I would say that you're right. Mitchell's plan was to, to kind of take it apart little by little. But as it is, I mean... You had suitors for both these guys, O'Meara and Mitchell. Was that going to be the case next year or f- or the following years after that? Yeah, so you, it, there was a trigger there because if you let them hang on the list for another year, and we've had our criticisms of both of them, and certainly Sam hasn't played them in the positions they wanted to perform in. Mm-hmm. Uh, he only moved Tom Mitchell into the centre very late to show that he was still good. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. And, and I, I love it. The pies, mm-hmm. the ones that failed to tag him and he get 50, they're the ones that pick him up. It's certainly a workaround, isn't it? <laughs> I, I would have thought a hard tag would have sufficed, but no, they've just recruited him. That works. Uh, so, you know, he, he's going to be fearsome next year at the pies. Be they've good. been crying out for a player it's, like it's that. That's what I said. I, so, I, I flagged this a while ago when I advocated moving Tom Mitchell on. I said he's not necessarily good for us at the moment, but prepare for him to torture teams next year. He's and and the plaudits came for... For Jager, in yes. how, how good he's going to be for Frio in leadership and mm. running through the lines and things like that. Mm-hmm. All that did made me feel like, why didn't we get better deals for these fellas? If they're going to be that good at the next club, do you know what I mean? Oh, it's classic. So they just, that's yeah. why it went down to the wire because we know they're better than what we got in the mm-hmm. end, but we just couldn't hang on to them. Well, it, and they, they stared us down. Righty. <laughs> Stared us down Well look this is classic trade period rhetoric Everyone that leaves your club Is going to be a superstar Everyone that arrives at your club Oh yeah you'll be alright <laughs> You know <laughs> what I mean It happens every year to Hawthorne And then obviously Jackie goes with Our blessing Oh yeah for sure yeah, Gunston is going to make that forward line at Brisbane exceptional But yeah they're, it's frustrating How important they look to be To their next side Yeah it's true we're, we're, we've given them a leg up, each of them. 
you know, Frio, Brisbane, Collingwood, they are better off for having our talent. Yeah, but the other point is, and the reason I'm frustrated, is we didn't get anything between the 6 and the 24, which is our aim at the beginning of this trade period. Can, Can I say that overall, I asked for your feelings on the trade period, mine were, it wasn't a fail by any means, but I would say that I felt underwhelmed for our return for what we for what we traded out. I really did think that a lot of the chat was about getting a pick in the twenties. Yeah. And when I saw that we didn't get that, I was like, okay, well Between the six and the twenty four they wanted another opportunity. Yeah, and we didn't get it. What we did do, however, is we got another second rounder next year, and that's tied to the Bulldogs. Mm-hmm. Which we've received from Fremantle somehow. They've got it. Mm-hmm. Um so it's tied to the Bulldogs. Now that's a bit of it. What do they call it when you death riding? Because the dogs could do anything. Yeah. And now we've got an interest in them doing badly. You know, more over than we ordinarily would. What were you saying to me in uh, in our DMs last night? Tob in the full forward <laughs> position. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, they've lost their best and fairest. Yes, they have. Yeah, not exactly ideal. And also next year we will have Brisbane's round four future pick. Yes, that's right. Before we get to the players that have arrived, the draft hand is unchanged, 6 and 24, and then we add 41, 48, 50, 52, and 65, which seems like too many and has brought about the suggestion that we'll go into deals on draft night. Yep, it's been suggested that Essendon and Brisbane are the ones we'll look at because they need points for their respective players. Mm -hmm. Pretty sure Brisbane, the case would be Ashcroft. Well, I think Brisbane have two targets. So they're the most likely to offer us something. Okay, I wasn't familiar with the second target, but I do know that Essendon, they're they're worried about Alwyn Davey Jr. not lasting till pick 22, Mm -hmm. which I'm fairly sure is a good bet. Oh, oh, wouldn't that be fun? Oh, dealing with with Essendon? Oh, love it. Good old Adrian Dodgy Dodoro. How does he... I mean, they've removed everyone else. (laughs) He survives. He remains. It's the cockroach like the, of the AFL industry. I would have called him the chimney because, you know, <laughs> <laughs> everything else is gone. The chimney remains. Yeah, gotcha. As a reminder of the, where the fire ought to have been, you know. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. Well, you know, there's been some really dark writing about how Hawthorne's going to go next year. And- okay, well, before we get to that, can I say that my expectations, having been underwhelmed at the end of this trade period with what we got back... yeah. I would expect that we do some wheeling and dealing with those picks. We have to, right? We have to see some movement on that. Yeah. And then to make myself feel better, I had a glance at, you know, the guys that are really pushing for top four and making finals and everything. And I looked at St Kilda and I thought, hmm. It could Could have been worse. worse. Absolutely could be worse. (laughs) And I resent anyone saying that Hawthorne has been the worst uh, fairing team in this trade period when something like that Gold Coast deal happens. Oh, mate. Which is... Abominable. That that is one of the worst of all time, and automatically relegates their period as a failure to do something like that. It's not. But hang on, it's not the first time they've gone into a ridiculously one sided deal with the Geelong Football Club. Yeah, and we've got to understand that Gold Coast isn't exactly autonomous. You know, it doesn't mm-hmm. control itself. It is basically a puppet of the AFL. So before. I go into my conspiracy theories. Uh, I knew the tinfoil hat was coming We will out. pull back. Let's get to the deals that were actually done for Hawthorne. The first up being uh, Jack Gunston. So in this case, Brisbane didn't really need to enter into a deal with us. No, but they didn't want to risk their compensation. Yeah, and also as a nod to, to Jack, I think, mm-hmm. um, they have provided us with, with uh, pick 48 and their future round four selection. Yeah. Which, that round four selection, doesn't sound like too much. But I, I have a feeling we'll get talking about the draft soon enough for could, next year. Could be useful. Could be useful to us. All right. So we'll get to that. Anyway, we bid farewell to Jack Gunson, which, never nice. He's a superstar. Uh, has been for a long time. Um, who steps up in his place? Is, is it Emerson Jecker, as we've, as we've discussed? Does he take up that forward post? Now, I, I would say he, of the three that have left, is the match winner. Yeah, he is. Like he won, yeah. he won a few matches for us that bought four points. I mean, that, that's not to deride what Tom Mitchell and Jager Amira did, but he was exceptional in a few games that bought us four points. Yeah, I agree. So they're going to have a rough time covering. 
Yeah, it's a fair few goals that just evaporates from this Hawthorne lineup, and um, they have to find the answers somehow. And who that's going to be? Not only that, but he took a good opponent each time. Exactly right. Yeah. And so, <laughs> regardless mer- of his output, the reputation enough. The, the merry-go-round. You know, you get a stronger opponent now. Then, with moments to go, Tom Mitchell. Three-way trade. Didn't see that coming. But that's how it played out. So Geelong gave up pick twenty-five. And uh, Ollie Henry got there. Collingwood receives Tom Mitchell and that pick 25. Mm -hmm. And Hawthorne receives a bloke called Cooper Stevens, Mm -hmm. who was pick 16 in the 2019 draft Mm -hmm. and has played, is it less than 10 games for the Cats? Yeah, I believe he only debuted this year. He managed seven games. Meanwhile, uh, he he notched up nine games in their VFL side this year, averaging 23 touches. One of their better contributors for that side. Uh, We're talking a a 21-year-old, 188-centimetre, big-bodied inside mid. That's the kind of player that we've received. It sounds good. Geelong Falcons boy. Mm -hmm. So uh, he should get along with Warple. (laughs) That's right, yes. And then along with him, we've got picks 41 and 50. Yeah, a bit about Cooper Stevens. We're we're talking a guy that, uh, look, if you're going to trade out O'Meara and Mitchell, you need to do something to replenish those midfield stocks. So I agree. Young kid, got the world at his feet. Contested work, clean hands, consistency and endurance, a big strength of his as well. I mean, he's coming from the Premiers. Uh, In another team, he might have earned more of a regular shot. But the fact is that Geelong was stacked for talent. Um, He couldn't get a look in. He could be anything at the moment. We're not really sold on his capabilities. Um, Doesn't sound like he's too quick. Oh, he goes okay. Have you seen any of his highlights? He looks, he looks good. I reckon. Yeah, I mean they look, they all look good. <laughs> In the highlights, yeah, I, I get that. <laughs> He's pick sixteen. He's Out, got to have some talent. Outside game, though, I will credit you that it's it's not his strength. He's an inside mid. That's that seems to be his pure game right there. That seems like a good pickup. I mean, yeah. it sounds like he'll start in the VFL and push for a place from there. He doesn't so. look like a lock for twenty two. Yeah, he can though. We know that he can step up. But I don't think he'll start in the 22. All right. The last deal that happened. And I didn't. I thought it might have not gone through, mm-hmm. to be quite honest. I thought Jager might be staying and uh, duking it out with Sicily for the captaincy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh, he's on his way to Frio, who had a remarkable trade period. Yeah. Losing big players and gaining. Uh, it's quite... Quite a strange period for them because you have no idea what they'll do next year. Yeah, it, it was so much to change. Yeah. Anyway, we received Lloyd Meek, who we'd been told was coming, what, for a month? Yeah, that's been flagged for a while. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and a future second round pick, Fremantle received Jager, and a future fourth round pick, Todd Hawthorne. So let's talk a little bit about Lloyd Meek. 203 centimetre ruck prospect, has the ability to push forward and provide a target there. Taken at pick 69, nice, in the 2017 <laughs> National Draft. Recently uh, crowns the Peel Thunder best and fairest. Yeah. That, <laughs> I mean, he looks imposing. Big, got a lot of meat on his bones. Yep. He's well developed. Yeah, He's appeared for Frio. They've got a tremendous ruck division already. Yep. It's become ridiculously good now well he was squeezed out is what happened yeah yeah and now he comes to hawthorne and can i mention that this is like big boy but a decade younger yeah, potentially yeah i'll tell you what i like from his highlights is he's got a, a good amount of acceleration on him he can build a head of steam very quickly for a big man and the ruck work is there the footy iq uh ground level work is there too and obviously for a big guy contested marking is one of his strengths too people in the know very bullish about Lloyd Meek. Yes, uh, it's something about his um, enthusiasm to connect his body to other bodies around him. Mm-hmm. There's a, a certain willingness and a delight in the to crunch. To bruise and batter. Yeah. <laughs> I, I notice it in the little highlights package. And no fear in taking on the tackler. And for a big fellow like that, that is excellent to see. Well, it stocks our ruck division as well. Which is a tick in the box. So he's first 22 for me. Well, if he's not, he's close too. So I would say that. Meek and Reeves? Yeah, Meek and Reeves. I'd be equally happy with Lynch and Reeves, to be honest. Now, Meek can play forward as well. Yep. As, as Ramsden would be looking at playing forward as well. So you're getting a ruck division that isn't just your lone ruckman. You can Hybrid. spin it through. Yep. There's a lot of mix and match, and mm-hmm. you're unpredictable to the opposition. And, yeah... 
R- Ramsden's going to take a little while longer yet. But oh, the fa- absolutely. But, but the yeah. point is that we're stocked with four Ruckman, which I think is the right number. You don't and, want to dip below that. And listening to Mark McKenzie, he was frustrated and concerned with Lynch's season. Mm-hmm. And I got the impression that um, they're looking for a backup there, yeah. just in case. They're looking for uh, Ned Reeves' partner in crime. But he also mentioned that, you know, Lynch is a very good forward. You've got to be feeling good about our ruck division, which is something that <laughs> we haven't had the luxury of in 2022. Well, I'm so happy to pick up a used ruckman. Yeah. Rather than having to develop one from scratch, because that just doesn't happen. Well, we've got that with Ranson already. He's the Reeves project. Reeves as well, I suppose. We've been developing him, but it's just over yeah. the course of the last 60 years, our own yes. Philip Ruckman are very few and far between. Yes, but all I'm saying is that you don't want uh, a, a second Ramston. You don't. You want a guy that's sort of ready to plug in and play. Yep. Um, I don't think it'd be wise to have four Ruckman and two of them are nowhere near it. And know, to get just... a big body in there is great. Yeah. So if you look at what we've picked up with the free agency of Carl Amon, elite mm-hmm. talent, one of the best wingmen in the league, Tick, Yep. You have a backup or a replacement for McAvoy and Lloyd Meek. Yep. And then you have a bloke that has a pretty high ceiling in Cooper Stevens, who comes in as a, you know, uh, an inside mid who is developed, yep. quite physically developed, but is terribly hungry. Yeah. So that, that's just a, a move to reinvent our, our midfield, our engine room. Uh, that as that continues, that exploration of doing just that. We can spin it as much as we like, and I do see the positives. Uh, I've caused to be optimistic about Hawthorne long term. The fans right now are unsettled. We can see it all over our social well, media. Well, the balance is, is gone. A lot of experience has walked out the door. Because Clarkson, what he did was he tried to keep it a balanced team. Mm-hmm. Tried to have you know, a, a decent bell curve to the list. Yeah. Sort of arcing towards the 23, 24 age bracket. And it got beyond him and... He bought in because we remember we had a big hole, yeah, in the age profile, and we bought in Amir and we bought in Tom to fill yes, that yeah. part of the profile. Well, that's just been gouged open again, mm-hmm. and and now we're going to be very young. Yeah. So, fun fact: by my brother's count, hit me up with this stat: uh, Hawthorne just lost one thousand three hundred ninety-seven games of experience this trade period. Now, you might be wondering uh, how that stacks up with North Melbourne several years back. They lost over 2,000 games worth of experience. So if anyone's wondering, I just want to put that into some kind of perspective. Okay, so what you're saying is is we're not as bad as North Melbourne for the umpteenth <laughs> time this year. But the question oh, is... Oh, you can get your cheap shots in, in <laughs> North Melbourne and I can't say anything about North. Yeah, but they, they're a threat. Now, <laughs> but that's the problem. Like, you look at North, they got picked two and three. Yeah. They've made one into two and three. Mm-hmm. Are we going to be better than them next year, Nick? Yeah, I, I don't know. For a team that's rebuilding... Because I imagine this is this is the stuff that just keeps you up for the next 12 months, really. Can we, you know, roll keep, in, roll keep in with North Melbourne? You know, or, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like the idea Harley that... Reed, Harley Reid is already the talk of the town. The, the idea that Hawthorne will wait for the trade period to tank and not <laughs> do it in the previous four <laughs> years to try and just get a couple of... Uh, better look, picks I look, mean, pe- people people are down on Hawthorne at the moment Hawthorne's fans are a bit anxious all I would say is that you are looking at Mitchell and O'Meara as if they just arrived at the club you are singing their no, praises I'm looking at them and going no, just look hang at on. the workload they did just hang on you're looking good at their virtues good luck picking that up boys you are looking at all the virtues that were promised and, like, they absolutely delivered on that promise 100%. One has a brown low shore. That Look, was 2018. Yeah. That is gone. That, that that time has been and gone. Come on, Tom Mitchell is a tick. It, it's a new era. They are not capable of delivering for Hawthorne what we wanted them to. <clears throat> and if you don't move on now... Okay, we're drawing then they, a veil. They we're... become list cloggers. Oh, wow. They, oh. become, they sit on our list and they deny our chance to rebuild properly. This is an absolutely brutal call. And it's a bold one, but it's the right one. You have to do this now. This is year two of the rebuild that we're entering. If you let this go now, you don't do it properly. I commend Sam Mitchell. I mean, you call call it a rebuild, but... As opposed to what? what you would had you a wrecking ball out earlier. So. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, you've got to rebuild it. You've got to tear things down to rebuild. <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay. All right. Fair How, enough. Well, okay. Put it this way. Again, not only to you, because I feel like I'm getting some opposition from you, and that's fine. No, I'm just teasing. No, that's because all right. Because I'm about to bring up the fact that the leadership group of one now yeah. has played less than a handful of games in, what, 12 months? You're throwing back to our, our 2021 leadership group, and there's a photo that I posted to our socials, and only Warple remains. Yeah. The rest are retired or traded on. Mm-hmm. And that's quite stark. But let me continue my point. You tried to derail me. <laughs> Don't sit there across from me and tell me you have enjoyed any part of Hawthorne's midfield beyond Joy Newcomb and your boy Connor Nash with the occasional cameo and maybe <laughs> Dylan Moore with his cameos as well. Do not tell me that that engine room has been working for you. Because it hasn't been for me. It hasn't been for Hawthorne fans. It's been absolutely smashed week after week. But it still beat Geelong on Easter Monday. We can do it again. We can do it again. Watch us do it again. See, that's kind of how I feel about it. Okay. That surprises like, me. No, no. I, well, listen, to be honest, about <clears throat> 9 o'clock last night, I thought, well, there's no point in really looking back now. No, not at all. But but this is the thing. Even if you want to look back, you'll find that, oh, gee, with O'Meara and Mitchell, out comes a lot of experience from that Hawthorne side. Yeah, a lot of experience losing. No, I was looking back a lot thinking, of experience. geez, we could have done with Minchington right about now. <laughs> a pinch of minch <laughs> is what this team needed, the secret ingredient. There were so many, if you look back over the, after the premierships, when we sort of overvalued a lot of players. Yeah. And, I mean, the hunger... Leaves you yeah. if you've got three in the bag. You know, we, we sort of overvalued the list and didn't really pick. We picked guys that were like the cherry on top, the icing, not mm-hmm. the grunt players. And we thought we were getting that from Jager and Mitchell, but, you know, the, the just the timing was out. History will look upon O'Meara and Mitchell and then, and then time in Hawthorne much more favourably than, say, your Ty Vickery. We, who was seen as an abject failure. That did not work for Hawthorne. But I'll tell you right now, oh, in terms of Clarko's vision... Who could have seen that? In terms of Clarko's vision, these guys did not work. I'm sorry, it's true. They did not take us to the heights that we needed to, and we need to address that now, because we had the chance now. We had suitors for them right now, and who knows if that would have been the case next year or the year after. All right, looking forward. That's all done. Don't need to talk about it anymore. Yep, sure. How much is the lack of experience next year going to cost us? Okay, who are our experienced heads? And who becomes the new leadership group? We've got a question from Shana here. Is Sicily captain by default now? Oh, that's so mean. Well, I mean, he was in the box seat anyway, but who else? Uh, Warple. Yeah, Warple. Bruce, maybe? Yeah, he'd have to take up a leadership position. Yeah. Um, and then we're going to get a nod from the club internals as to who is the next... Whoever's elevated into that group. See, Sammy intimated that there was a, a break in the group between the haves premierships and the didn't haves. Yeah. And also the older players and the players that had come in, been yep. traded in. And now I guess there'll be a lot more of the cohesion that you'd expect from the group. He's all over this, Sammy. That's the thing that I believe in, that he really knows and understands what he wants to do with this group. And how the youth play for one another and together. Mm-hmm. And you see it out there. You see. Oh, they're really connected. Yeah. yeah I believe in that too. Uh, another question from Simon here. He asks whether we need a forward in the leadership group. Is Mitch Lewis ready or Impey? Or what about Wingard? What about Wingard? That is the question. Because he, well, he wasn't on the table this year. What about the Port Adelaide trio? Is it a trio? <laughs> well, Impey, Wingard and Amon. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, look, all three, that's a hell of a lot of excitement. Yeah, if they if we can get them on the park together, I think. Look, we lost a few games by less than three goals last year. Yeah, and I, I think that you know if some people put their hands up, they take on the workload of Mitchell and O'Meara, and they're a little less predictable than Mitchell and O'Meara. Mm-hmm. I think you, you can see really good things. I think it can be exciting. I know it's going to be hard. I know there's going to be a huge dip in form at some point from this young side. Yeah, for sure. And it's going to look like curtains. Mm -hmm. And Sammy is prepared to stare down that moment because that has to happen with a list like this. Mm -hmm. Okay? And that's 
that's what I like about this. It was brave to get this done because, and he must feel secure in his job or in his role or just, you know, this is what I'm here for. I have to make these decisions. Yeah. To to go and, and take that. Look, he could have left Liam Shields. Yeah. You know, he could have said, McAvoy, you can have another year. You know, we've got plenty of spots on this list. Yeah. But no, he's taking the hard decisions and going, we're going to be so much better off. Maybe not next year. Maybe not 2024. But certainly 25, 26, we're going to look a hell of a lot better mm-hmm. for these for these moments of anxiety. Yeah. 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 Uh, the fear of making that hard decision is going to pay off then because otherwise you're only left with regret. I don't begrudge people their anxiety around this. It, it will be tough. No, but I'm saying this anxiety, the yep. one you're feeling now about mm. this, this is born out of good, hard decisions. That's my point. Yeah. That, I, I completely agree with that. Uh, we had a question from Asher. Do we see Finn in the centre a bit more that next year? I would say we see him a lot more in the centre. Yeah. Yeah, Finn McGuinness. I, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if the shackles were off Finn and yep. I made him an attacking mid. Yep, I agree with that. Uh, Appleby asks, is this an educated tank? By the time Hawthorne has finished its rebuild, the Tassie team will be in full swing. Plus, will next year be about going after free agents? We must have so much cash. Now, Mark McKenzie said that we weren't paying 100% of anyone's salary at another club. Mm. We're, paying, that, we're paying bits and pieces. We are. But... Um, Surely we can attract some blokes that are just after the cash. <laughs> yeah, it's the very as long as they're back for Hawthorne. As long as they're back for Hawthorne <laughs> as a kid and they'd like some cash, come on down. It's the uh, the HFCRP recruiting policy, that what is. is I don't know. They love Hawthorne And supporters. it gets underlined by the media department. Yeah. Well, we should say Cooper Stevens is the latest. The oh, okay. for Hawthorne is is Lloyd Meek not? I'm not sure. Um, Do you reckon he'll struggle for game time? Is there a process by which we can <laughs> baptise him? Or <laughs> Well, I- I'm picturing like a clockwork orange. A born-again Hawthorne supporter? Highlights of the three-peat with his eyes wide open. <laughs> <laughs> the 89 grand final. <laughs> it-, it is a little bit weird. Yeah, it-, it is strange. And that it's filtered through the AFLW as well. Yeah. With well, uh, Jazz Fleming. Yeah. And uh, even Beck Goddard, you know, was a big Hawthorne fan. Well, I, I totally understand it there because they're trying to generate a culture and they want to continue a Hawthorne sort of yeah regime through the fabric of the club. Yeah. But on the other side, I'm like, you know, is this are we really getting the best talent available or are we getting the best Hawthorne supporting talent available? Let me circle back around to the question. Is this a shrewd and calculated move given the context of what could happen with Tassie? Well, what does that mean? Well, you have a situation like you had with the uh, well, with the Suns and the Giants, where they get a huge leg up as an expansion team. Yeah, and that potentially robs us in our endeavours to rebuild. Well, they're not. You know, they don't announce them and then they're up and going the next year. No, I understand that. But how long's a piece of string? How long does this rebuild take? You know, ideally you want it as quick as possible, but you just don't know. We just we wouldn't want this interfering with us in any. In any I don't way. think it's got anything to do with the timing of other clubs. I think this is purely about our list and making that hard decision now. And you know, and maybe it's got more to do with the fact that North Melbourne and West Coast look so putrid mm. as that we can afford to take risks like this. Yeah. Yep. This question from Justin. Mitch turned Nash into a midfielder. Could Scrimshaw play the Gunston role? Both are 193 centimetres. Scrimmer is a very good mark and kick. He moved forward against the Saints and kicked two goals. Surely we can't expect Sarong to play that role just yet. He's only played two games. I, I actually like this. I enjoyed Scrimmer when he went forward. I thought it was an act of desperation on the day. Certainly it was, yeah. On the day it was. You know, he loves a goal. He really does. <laughs> he does. Like, he, for he a backman... For a backman, he absolutely loves having a crack. Look, we've got an excess of halfback talent. If you're going to reinvent some players on this list, that's probably where you want to draw from because we can cover it. So I'm not opposed to that at all. And, and Scrimmer does love a goal. He's got the talent there. He's got the marking prowess. But it's uh, a totally different role. Like to, yeah. to hold your position in the forward line, um, to let the pack come over the top of you mm-hmm. more often than not, whereas a defender you're going over the pack or you're timing it. You can reinvent a player. You absolutely can. I mean, we saw it. I know he had a, a shockingly mediocre year this year, but Cozzy 
you know, he was a tried and tested defender at VFL level, and we really thought that was his path in. And then all of a sudden, he explodes onto the scene as a likely forward prospect, which I hope he can recapture next year. What you're talking about is Trent Crowe-like resurrection yeah. from back line to forward line at Frio. Yeah. To go, go back to the back line, Trent, would you? <laughs> you would be better better for you at Hawthorne in the back line. That's, yeah. That's where you're good, mate. <laughs> you're talking about a reverse Crody sending Scrimmer forward. That's what it is. <laughs> We also had Crowd forward at times too. Yeah. Anyway, this is the sort of thinking Justin's hit on something here. This is the sort of thing that we need uh, as we look to oh, rebuild yeah, this team. Well, I mean, listen, Mitchell is just going to be running experiments all year. Yeah. Got to act with imagination. Yeah. Oh, he's just, This year he saw what he had on the list in terms of young talent. Basically, we saw everything that we had. Mm-hmm. Um, or they haven't been recontracted. And now... He's going to do similar things, but he's just going to start flicking the magnets around because they know how he wants them to play now. Your favourite, Sicily in the middle. Sicily anywhere. <laughs> yeah, well, Captain Sicily anywhere, that, that yeah. is to you. Yeah, you tell, <laughs> like, imagine someone on, on this field now telling him, would you mind, you know, going behind the ball, sis? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Liam asks, do you try and pick swap with the red and black team? They need points, and Alvin Davy Jr. probably isn't lasting until pick 22. Who do you like at pick six, uh, in bracket seven, of course, because that, that could be pushed back? Um, oh, the, like, all our picks in the 30s and 40s come forward quite a way due to, mm. due to Brisbane and Essendon taking up their picks. Um, <clears throat> Liam's made a good point here. The, uh, the Alvin Davy Jr. does sort of make it difficult for Essendon. If we can benefit from their distress, I'd be quite happy. Yeah, either you do a deal with us, or we'll uh, we'll take him pick six. <laughs> Is that how that works? Yeah. <laughs> That's not blackmail. That's the draft. It is. That is the reality of things. <laughs> I hope we put it to them. Uh, Dino asks, uh, well, it's more of a statement than a question, I guess. Five of our losses last year were by a combined margin of 30 points. I think we'll miss Gunners. I don't see how adding Amon, perhaps a healthy Chad, and hopefully a rejuvenated Warpedo can't get us past those clutch moments next time around. Give me year two of the kids. Yeah, the youth policy is in absolute full swing. Uh, I don't know where Chad plays, but... I would imagine he gets a healthy amount of time in the middle. Yeah, I would hope that he gets more midfield time because that was arguably, in his career with Hawthorne, that's where he's been at his most dangerous and effective. Yeah, but uh, also he he gets hampered fairly quickly with that much workload. Yeah, well, he's an impact player. You kind of you need to use him sparingly. I don't think you start a game knowing that or feeling you can play him there for the whole game. I think you inject him in there when you need something. In terms of the draft... How many inside mids do you reckon we'll pick up? Uh, Given that you can name maybe four on the list at the moment. Yeah. Uh, Look, I think in terms of what this midfield needs, we need a bit of dash and creativity and uh, someone who's zippy. And if they can get the ball as well, that'd be nice. Basically, I just hope for a player who can do it all. (laughs) Well, from what they've been picking up, it's... Highly contested style players. Mm-hmm. Apart from Carl, who's made a, a very good career out of being on the outside and distributing, their pickups very much have a desire to contest. Well, do you feel we're quick enough in the mids at the moment? Because I don't. I think being quick is is pretty much part of being young. Mm. I think uh, Cooper Stevens will be a lot quicker than the other two. Yeah, maybe. But then there's also speed of thought. Mm. Which is another thing entirely. Because yeah. remember, Sam was never quick. Mm-hmm. Sam yeah. Mitchell was never it, quick. It did not matter at all. <laughs> this question from Enns, you'll like this one. Uh, seeing as most of my questions will be asked by others, what are your predictions on who gets what jumper numbers? Apologies, Tiz. I know how much you love this question. Okay, so three is vacant. Who are you yep. giving that to? Uh, Connor Nash. <laughs> yeah, all right. Why not? I don't know. Well, what you need is a bloke that's slightly balding on top. Yeah. Because you've had Mitchell Lewis. Sorry. Mitchell Lewis. (laughs) I'm leaving that in. (laughs) Condon. Yep. And the great one, Mm -hmm. Lee Matthews. Yeah, you don't need to say it. 
I'm pretty sure people got it. Well, I mean... <laughs> For any of you non-Hawthorne supporters listening... <laughs> <laughs> it's odd, right? So, Nash, if you're listening, <laughs> just a little bit of Nair. Mm. Is that what it's called? Is it Nair? The one that makes your hair fall out? And just do a little, you know... Like, <laughs> Like God, a- that's threading a needle, isn't it? You don't want to do too much. <laughs> <laughs> get, a, get some help with that, I reckon. It's either that or Newcomb, who sort of has this rambunctious style that is yeah. very much like yeah, no, Lee himself. I, I get it, but number 44 for Newcomb, please. Yeah, you want him in the change. 44, don't you? Yep. Yeah. yeah. With a haircut, you never know. He might have a little I, I, ball patch there. I would be heartbroken if Newcomb got a haircut. The seven? The seven. It's a good number. Yeah, it is. I can't decide now. You could give it to Meek. Yeah, I was thinking Meek, purely because of the ruck. But then you called me out on this before. You said, oh, yeah, Aussie was a ruck, was he? (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. Can we... We can get back to this. It's just so hard to Oh, come on, the 10. Let's go with the 10. I still find it hard to think of anyone but Jager in this number. So that's where I'm at. That's terrible. I know. That's where I'm at after the trade period, 24 hours on. Okay. Well, uh, yeah. Well, Amon, I would imagine, would be a good... Uh, Amon, I'd be comfortable with. The 17, the I have been sort of frustrated with the efforts of the number 17. Mm-hmm. So who do you put there? I don't know, but uh, it's a big number. And 19 is a massive number. Like, are they going to rest that? What are they going to do with that? Emerson Jacker? Well, I mean, he doesn't look like a goal machine, well, which is yet. generally what the 19 is. Not yet he doesn't. The 19 is generally a goal machine. I know. 26, Cooper Stevens, maybe. Yeah, perhaps. Or 28. Yeah, I'm not sure they give him a low number myself, but anyway. Maybe blank 28. 21's there too. Yeah. Anyway, bit of oh, fun. I could say Amon in 21, actually. Can you? Yeah, well, there's no rhyme or reason to any of this. And as soon as, yeah, you're, you're looking at me like, yeah, good one, dickhead. Like you know. <laughs> I, can always find like a, I can always find one that doesn't agree. That's the beauty of this Yeah, game. I've been doing this six years. I know that very well. <laughs> uh, we need to move on. We need to talk about what we intro the show with, the AFLW. Who saw this coming? Three in a row. And in this particular case, they were, well, they were clinical. Well, there was something that was uploaded via the uh, Hawks social media today, um, which I really liked. Bet Goddard has a million of them, loves a story, loves a gimmick. And on this occasion, pre-game, the players are in the rooms, the lights went off and they're wearing headlamps. Talking about, what are we doing? We've cut the power. And boy, didn't they? They came out there, 13-point win. Is that, who's that slow clapping in the corner? Who's oh, that? It's no better or worse than a bag of flour, is all I'm saying. Or, or you know, ice skating or ballet no, just, or whatever Clark yeah, dreamt but it, up. I mean, you've got to say that these things always sound weird later on. But this kind of stuff focuses the mind, doesn't it? Well, it did. Because yep. they out-hunted the power mm. perfectly. They cut the power 70 tackles to 40. You can't tell me it didn't make any difference. And maybe that's a bit romanticised on my end. I accept that. I mean, Port Adelaide were woefully in front of goal. But generally speaking, Hawthorne won the game because they were cleaner. They were cleaner. They outworked the power. Uh, That's 70 tackles to 40. That's well above the men's average, just FII, in a shorter form of the game too. Lucas Rod and Smith led the way with nine and eight tackles, respectively. In her uh, her 50th game, actually, Captain Tilly Lucas Rod, she was the leading ball winner on the ground. 19 touches, sealed the result with a goal in the dying seconds. How'd she get that? A tackle, holding the ball. Thank you very much. That's the game. Great call. You reckon? Well, in a 50th game to kick the goal that seals the contest. The umpire was in a woeful position to make that call. Couldn't care less. I exactly. thought it was an excellent call. <laughs> excellent. Excellent and way so did the crowd. The Didn't they get involved? Crowd loves it. Uh, Caitlin Ashmore, 16 touches, made a great return to the side. Uh, Aileen Gilroy, 12. Uh, Ainsley Kemp with 10. There were strong contributors too. Jenna Richardson made the AFLW Team of the Week in just her second game, proving her credentials as a solid defender. We've seen it all year at the VFLW. Great that she's been able to make that translate. Meanwhile, it was actually two of our talls that I thought really stood out, Tiz. Yeah, Anya McDonough is really very good at leading up the ground and having an impact contest, mm-hmm. isn't she? And she'll take marks and a couple of times very strong relieving marks that yes. were just punted out of the back 50. Yeah. And she, very quick, got there. Yeah, some real big-time contests that she imposed herself on. And a great goal from a contested ball win, jetting away from that contest. Uh, but it was Lucy Wales who really stole the show. A well-deserved Rising Star nomination, uh, our second for the season. The other one being Jazz Fleming, of course. 
uh, Lucy Wales is putting together a magnificent season, just a colossus week after week. Really important touches against the power, turning them in all 100% game time. And, uh, you know, when, when Tamara Luke went down earlier in the season, you thought, geez, this is going to test us. But uh, young Lucy Wales has really stood up. Yeah, remarkable, really. Um, and came off the D's list, so all in all. <laughs> Even better for you. Yeah, well, she was a standout for Casey uh, for VFLW, and it's great to have her. She's ranked 10th in the comp for total hitouts in her debut year, and you can't get too much better than that. that that's beyond what we'd hoped. So now they've faced the Giants. Mm-hmm. Are they any good? They've copped a bit of a pantsing recently. Yeah. Uh, most recently against Collingwood. I think they only managed 14 points for the game, and they got done by about 30. So this is back on their home deck, though, for Yeah, we've round. got to travel this time. Yeah, this is our first, first time interstate. Uh, before that was a practice game against the Eagles, so it's been a while. <laughs> Where we didn't show up. Well, exactly. But things have changed. A lot's changed since that game. Well, so it's tough. If you haven't been travelling as a side together, it's very different. Yeah, I would say that uh, form line and culturally, and, and just the, the general vibe of the place is a lot better than what it was back then, and all, a lot more established as well. So it's Pride Round against the Giants at Henson Park in Marrickville, New South Wales, Sunday, 3.10pm. Uh, for anyone that uh, that wants to attend this, there's a watch party at Glenferry Hotel. So uh, get down there and uh, hopefully watch another win. A fourth win on the trot would be magnificent uh, with other Hawks supporters. Yeah, well, four wins on the trot would be well above uh, expectations for a yeah. fledgling club. Well, right now, as it stands on the ladder, we're the best performing expansion side. Thanks to the three wins we've put together in a row, we sit 11th on the ladder, suddenly within striking distance of a finals berth. And uh, it's all very exciting. Whether we make it or not, I mean, we've got some tough tests ahead. I mean, this just speaks... This is reward for all those years they spent Mm -hmm. creating a club and a culture and some kind of game plan in the VFL. It's a shame. It feels like it's all over before it's even begun. Just 10 rounds, the AFLW season. And we've got the Giants this week. Then we're back at Skybus Stadium. Sadly for us, we're taking on Brisbane. Which one's Skybus again? That's in Frankston. Yeah, Frankston. Yeah, Red Sky at Night, Hawthorne's Delight. <laughs> uh, we're taking on Brisbane, and, and they could crush us. Let's be realistic about that. They're very they would good. expect to. They would. They would. And then the final game of the season against is against Frio, who um, we're and above. over there. Yeah, that's over there, and we're above them on the ladder at the moment. They've been a bit inconsistent and, and variable this year. So, look, we could have ourselves a nice end to the season, even if we don't end up making finals. But from where we were, looking like we may not win a game, that, this is yeah. exceptional. Yeah, that was a very real possibility. and uh, Especially at quarter time against the Swans. Well, the turning point of the season, <laughs> regardless of what happens from here, we'll always think back to that bake from Beck Goddard. And, you know, is she on Cameo? Is she on Swish? Because I, I could use a bit of that in my personal <laughs> life. Motivate me, Beck. Get me going. Get that on your uh, your Apple iPhone, wake up alarm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The alarm to start the day. That would be magnificent. Anyway, we've got much else to talk about. The, the trade period is obviously the big one. So now what happens? We have delisted free ag- delisted free agency period, don't yeah, we? Yeah, I think that opens the first week of November. I don't have the key and dates And then we on. have another one of them for some reason. <laughs> and yeah. And then eventually, you know, we'll, we'll start, we'll do our draft special and previewing some of these kids that, that could land at Hawthorne. And, and there's a few delistings dropping. Like there are some yeah, already. good players... Being delisted, especially from Richmond, I saw saw today. Yeah, Sydney Stack is one of them. Um, is it uh, Collier Dawkins? Yeah, yeah. Riley, uh, from, yeah, yeah. Riley Collier Dawkins. Um, Oscar Baker from Melbourne. Who you know? I see the sp- Brown. The Brown brothers from Collingwood have been delisted. Of oh, course. There, there you go. There you so go. there's some talent that. I don't know whether they deserve a second opportunity, but... Uh... Yeah, that's the thing. When I, when I see these guys fall off the list, I, I read the couple of words that usually precede their name. Like in the case of Oscar Baker, speedy wingman. And, you know, eyebrows cocked a bit. I'm like, okay, well... All we you need to do is look that. at the first 22 and see if the bloke they couldn't get past was any good, really. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and you get an idea. But, yeah, there's there's definitely some blokes, and we've done it before, picked up blokes who were delisted and, and made them into exceptional players. Narkel. Role players, Nar- generally. Narkel, a guy in Geelong, uh, he, he's delisted now, and I know a lot of our you know, people on social media, that, that's the name that's probably getting the most traction with people. They want to see Quinton Narkel. Well, we saw him in the VFL this year, didn't mm-hmm. we, at Box Hill? Mm-hmm. And, 
Yeah, he is impressive in patches, but he's by no means consistent. Yeah. And you can see why he's not embraced down the, there. The question is, uh, you know, what is the the realistic chance of Hawthorne being the club that unlocks something for them? Pretty damn they, good. Where they take the next step. Right. Our development system is very good. Correct. So you Unless you're a Ruckman. <laughs> I don't know. We're seeing good things in that department at the moment. Yeah, uh, yeah. I got to say, uh, with yeah, Ned. Reeves. I mean, Red, Ned Reeves is well by, doing nice things by their own measure. He's the most promising player we have. And uh, Ramston has yes. done some nice things coming into the end of the year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think that's uh, really all we have to cover for this episode, mate. Two really big uh, talking points. Obviously, the trade period and our AFLW win. And well, I, I think. We kick back for a bit now here on the Hawk Talk podcast. There'll be a bit going on. We'll still be on social media, still be on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. You can find us on those socials there. Uh, other than that, we'll be back to preview the draft. I'm looking forward to the draft. I really am. It's uh, it's quite obvious that we're going to see the players we draft play. Yeah. So uh, it could really it really get quite exciting if we're doing deals on the night too with uh, mm-hmm. future. Future selections yep. into 2023 and things like that. That's right. That's something we didn't cover. The, the potential of next year's draft being pretty important for Hawthorne in terms of father-son selections. Yeah, there's father-son selections, but also there's one very much standout player. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Harley, the next Dusty Reed. I mean, geez, don't put any pressure on the kid at all. That's not me saying it. Well, I mean, granted, I did just say it myself. That's what we've heard. Mm. And it's also meant to be generally a better draft crop yes. than this year. Yeah, that's the consensus. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think as far as father-sons, the ones that come to mind, McCabe and Lawrence, I think, are the two. Yep. There might be a third, but it's just on the tip of my tongue at the moment. Anyway. Is it um, Deer? Is he around? No, I'm not sure. You might be right. I'm not, well, look, this is why we, we go away now, we do our research, we come back and we do our full draft preview. That's coming up in November. Uh, just to wrap up, maybe you're listening to this on Spotify, maybe you're streaming it on Audible, maybe you're using Apple Podcasts. If that's your platform of choice, why not take a few seconds to rate and review our show? We'd really appreciate that. As I said, we're, we're all over the socials. It's buzzing at the moment, given all the trade news just a hive of activity really and we'd love to have you join us on twitter facebook and instagram a community of the best most diehard hawk supporters out there get on board uh, lastly a massive thanks to our proud passionate and paid up patreon subscribers you really help make this podcast everything it is you help us put time into it week after week and uh, wonderful to welcome two new subscribers who came aboard just this past week thanks for your support pete and brooke we really appreciate it on the weekend you know how i'm a bit of a tight ass i went round to <laughs> Good start. A couple of markets and, you know, the op shops and things. Yeah. And then I haggle down certain items. And <laughs> Anyway, I found a couple of uh, AFL games from, like, 95. What, on, like, VHS tape or something? No, not, not to play. God, there's a generation gap. Um, <laughs> More like <laughs> trivia games and oh, stuff like that. Okay. You know? Here I was thinking <laughs> yeah. name again. Board games. Yeah. Okay, right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Not E games, whatever it is. And uh <laughs> sounded like an old old dottery fella. But anyway, um you will never get any of these answers and it's gonna be great. Oh really oh, okay, so that's a bonus episode that you have in mind. <laughs> well, you know, I did put you through my own self styled Hawthorne quiz from hell. Maybe it's only fair. Maybe I get to taste my own medicine. Uh, now, if you and like, there's some really weird questions because Frio is only just new to the thing, and you're like, "What are oh. they doing the waffle?" And you're like, "What?" <laughs> They're really clutching oh, for mate. Okay, content. so so my quiz is Hawthorne based. Yours is league wide. Oh, yeah, league wide. Oh, I'm. But e- even the Hawthorne stuff is. Even is- as a one-eyed Hawks fan, I'm not great at trivia. And you're expanding to the league, which I, it's all famously fun. I don't care about the other clubs. I'll <laughs> never get these right. Anyway, that's something in store. If you do like what we do and you're interested in becoming a subscriber, now's a great time because you could get that bonus episode coming up and you can get all three parts of our postseason player gradings available right now on Patreon. We go player by player and look at each Hawks 2022 season. That's subscriber-only content. So if you're keen to have a listen to that and all our other past, present, and future bonus episodes, do check out all the details at Patreon dot com slash hawk talk pod now as you recall the last player to come from geelong to hawthorne ended up with the premiership <laughs> jonathan simpkin didn't take many games to get it either <laughs> and A sign uh, of things to come and before that it took the good lord 
to leave Geelong to come to Hawthorne. Did you say the good Lloyd? The good Lord. Oh, sorry, I missed it. I thought you, you meant remember Lloyd Aaron? Mate. Yeah, Aaron yeah. Lord. Yeah, and then we sent him back. <laughs> it wasn't good enough. <laughs> Uh, say we're erring on the side of caution. Uh, I let myself down with that one, listeners. Okay, yeah. That's uh, and now we go on holiday. That's a really bad note to end. <laughs> All right, last thing on the trade period. What is your general feeling? I know we already discussed this, but I'm whilst underwhelmed, I'm very optimistic about the direction and what Sam's trying to do. Well, of the three that left, there's only one I want to see Norm Smith it. <laughs> well, he certainly deserves it. He could well do it. Jack Gunston. Well, he's been bloody close. He's been so close on many occasions. We only wish good things for him. And look, Brisbane, they're still in the window. Their acquisition of Gunston is only going to help them. And Fags, he'll be breathing easier. Yep, Fags and, uh, you know, Birchall's still up there, isn't he, as a runner. Mm-hmm. And Hodge is still very much connected to the Brisbane fold. I think we're leaning on, if, if it can't be us, can Brisbane do it? I'd be, I'd be happy with that. Happy enough. As happy as I can seeing another team lift Certainly it up. Certainly preventing others from doing it again. <laughs> we don't want to repeat it this year. <laughs> anyway, that'll do it for the Hawk Talk podcast. What a trade period. What an AFLW season we're enjoying. We'll be back to uh, preview the draft. Going to be plenty to talk about there. We are a happy team at Hawthorne.